Are you ready to take a hike? Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. It is springtime and a great time to get out and explore nature and Rancho Palos Verdes. Right now I'm next to the Ulta Vicente Reserve Trailhead. It's just behind the Kendida Civic Center. This is one of the many spectacular coastal trails in the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. Our city owns the preserve and it's co-managed with the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. And the program we're going to begin here at the trailhead where we'll meet up with our city's open space manager and a park ranger who are busy year-long keeping our parks trails and the preserve beautiful and safe for everyone and later on in the show we are going to travel over to abalone cove park where we will meet up with some budding artists and land conservancy crews who are busy preserving the landscape and restoring the habitat for all of us to enjoy my name is Katie Lozano and I work for the City of Rancho Palos Verdes in the Recreation and Parks Department. We are part of the Open Space Management Division and we are um, a staff that includes uh, myself, our Open Space Management staff that's operating some of our uh, parks adjacent to the preserves, as well as our park rangers. and. We work together with a multitude of partners to manage the city's open space, uh, particularly the Nature Preserve. And some of those partners are the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Land Conservancy, uh, Trump National Staff, as well as Terranea. Uh, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, since its founding in 1973, has been dedicated to open space preservation. Uh, some of its core tenants, including its general plan and its mission statement, uh, talk to the importance of preserving the natural resources of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, as well as the benefits that that serves the residents of Rancho Palos Verdes, but also the residents of the region. As we stand here at the Alta Vicente Reserve Trailhead, it's a reminder of all the beautiful trails we have in our Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. Absolutely. So our Palos Verdes Nature Preserve is 1,500 acres right now. It's divided into 15 individual properties. Some of the most popular ones are the Portuguese Bend Reserve up uh, at the top of Crenshaw, and our coastal reserves are very popular too, Abalone Cove Reserve, Ocean Trails Reserve. Um, we have over 33 miles of trails uh, for public access in our preserve, and they accommodate uh, multiple uses, uh, hikers, bikers, and equestrians. Always check your trail markers and your trail maps because different trails have different uses. Uh, and as for public use, we see a lot of public use, and that speaks to the importance of balancing public use with the primary purpose of the preserve, with, which is habitat conservation. Uh, at our busiest trailhead, which is one of over 50, we see annually about, uh, or more than, 250,000 users. Okay, I'm going to have you move on to seven letters, and that is the NCCP slash HCP. Absolutely. So uh, those seven letters are the Natural Communities Conservation Plan Habitat Conservation Plan, which we just refer to commonly as the NCCP HCP. What NCCP HCPs are is their regional plans that serve two primary purposes. One is to conserve uh, the natural resources and specifically sensitive species. They do this conservation by setting aside and preserving large areas of land or nature preserves. For instance, the city's 1,500 acre Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. The second function of an NCCP HCP is to streamline and allow appropriate economic activity, which in the city's case is a lot of vital infrastructure projects, such as park development projects, the landslide mitigation projects. So that's what the city's NCCP HCP's primary purpose is to achieve those two goals. And I remember reading that we are one of about 21 areas or communities in all of California that has this designation, is that correct? Yes, and the city began the planning process to create an NCCP HCP here in Rancho Palos Verdes back in 1996. At that time we partnered with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife because of the abundance of natural resources in the city of RPV as well as the habitat we have here that supports the uh, several sensitive species. So we began the process then and through that partnership, through a variety of sources, the city was able to partner with our agencies and uh, compile the 1500 acre Palos Verdes Nature Preserve through a, a variety of methods of assembly including um, a lot of federal and state grant funding. Right. 
right? So because of this designation, there's also responsibilities that come with it, like making sure that you're doing what you need to do to maintain the habitat. Absolutely. And this is where we partner with the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. Once the land has been set aside and uh, preserved in perpetuity from development, which the city is responsible for, then we partner up with the Land Conservancy, a team of very qualified biologists, and they come in and they restore the land. So they're creating the habitat that will make these sensitive species uh, thrive uh, and be healthier in this community, as well as beautifying the land immensely. One of the exciting announcements with the city and the Land Conservancy was last year when you shared the news that um, the city has acquired 96 more acres in the preserve that's a wildlife corridor and the Land Conservancy kicked off the Gold Wild for the Peninsula campaign to help raise millions of dollars to purchase that land. So share more about the status of that wildlife corridor and what that means for the city and the Land Conservancy. So that was a very exciting purchase. Uh, that 96 acres was the last large remaining piece of land that was sought for inclusion in the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve, and it is now part of the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. Uh, it officially came under our ownership last summer, and it's serving as a wildlife corridor to link the 870 acres of inland preserve properties to the city's coastal preserve properties, which are 240 acres. So now that we have this critical link, it's going to accommodate uh, movement, foraging, and nesting for a variety of species, including the endangered and protected species covered under the NCCP HCP, as well as many other important species like the monarch butterfly and gray fox. Um, so now that we have this 96 acres preserved in perpetuity, the Land Conservancy is working on their habitat restoration plan for the property to make this property um, uh, more useful for these protected species to foster their development and increase their populations and make it a more functional corridor so they can be making that link. As we talk about that project, is there any other exciting project coming up that would impact what's happening in our nature preserve, in our parks, and our trails that you'd like to share right now? One exciting project that we'll be seeing coming soon is the city's trails network plan update uh, that was last updated in the 80s, um, or the trail plan was originally created in the 80s. What it does is it's going to consolidate uh, the city's variety of trail systems. Many people um, don't realize that the city also has a segment of the California Coastal Trail and many neighborhood trails and arterial trail systems. So that's gonna be a very neat project that takes all of the trails within the city. I think it's it's about over 50 miles of trails. It's going to consolidate them into one document and create user-friendly maps for the community to use. So we're expecting that to be finished by the end of this year and we're all really excited to see that. How do you balance the needs of the community with visitors and make sure that the habitat's being taken care of? How do you do all that? So the balancing act is one of the most challenging aspects uh, of managing the nature preserve. Um, we want to provide a uh, public access to this amazing resource and at the same time one of the primary purposes of the preserve is natural resource protection. So we have some tools that we use. Uh, one is our amaz amazing park rangers uh, who are out there shaping public behavior and educating the public on why this place is important and uh, open space regulations that are created to protect natural resources. Uh, we also have a great collaboration with the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy's Volunteer Trail Watch, which is a great group of volunteers who are out there on patrol on the trails, educating the public again on the importance of the land and natural resource protection that not many land managers have access to such an amazing resource. We um, focus heavily on public education and one really important tool is transparency in public education. We um, hold quarterly preserve public forums that we really encourage the public to participate in. That's a great avenue to learn about what we're doing and uh, for us to get feedback. And we try to be very proactive on our web page. And some of the ways that you can reach out to us and talk with us and learn about what we're doing is to attend a public forum. The next one is in July. Our email that goes directly to all of the park rangers and myself is trails at rpvca.gov. Or you can call our preserve info and reporting line at 310-491-5775 and speak to a ranger on duty that day. My name is Eric Wolterding. I am a park ranger here, um, one of the, the 
four that we have uh, in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, uh, where we primarily operate in the nature preserve and in the city parks and in the open space. Talk about a day in the life of being a park ranger in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, you never know what's going to happen in, in the day of a, of a park ranger here. Uh, we have a number of responsibilities, including, you know, uh, making sure the habitat is protected, um, our natural resources are protected, um, making sure that people are aware and are, are following the rules and the regulations in the in the nature preserve, um, that they're uh, having a good time, the trails are in great condition, and, uh, you know, just making sure that things are operating as they should. Yeah, I think something that we, we usually stress is the... Um, to plan ahead, to know what, what is allowed and not allowed in, in the parks and in the preserve. Um, you can do that when you arrive to the location, you know, take a, take a minute to, to read the rule signs, to check out the maps, know where you're going. Um, you can also do it ahead of time or uh, um, after the fact on our, on our website, uh, which is rpvca.gov slash trail alerts. Um, and there's an abundance of information on there. And one thing that we really like to stress is to um, to stay on the designated trails. Um, we want to have as little impact on the habitat and on the ecosystem as possible. It's a very delicate thing. So um, that's one thing with, that we try to stress to people is uh, stay on the designated trails, enjoy the views, enjoy observing, and uh, try to be hands and, and feet off. <laughs> and you mentioned stay on the trail. Spring is here. Everything is blooming and the little, little critters are hatching. So that's I'd right. like you to take this opportunity to educate about being aware of rattlesnakes. Yeah, the first thing that we uh, typically like to mention about rattlesnakes is is they, you know, they're not these dangerous creatures that they get portrayed as. They're just something that needs to be uh, respected and that we need to be aware of. So part of that is just uh, knowing what to do when you come across a rattlesnake, um, which is, you know, first and foremost, don't, don't uh, approach it any further. Uh, keep your distance. It just wants to do its thing. Um, there's there's different things that you can do to try to get it to go on its way, such as maybe a tap stomping on the ground um, to get the vibrations going where they're they're going to be aware of you and they're going to they're going to want to go do their thing. So the biggest thing is just not being afraid of them, but being aware uh, that they're out there, keeping your eyes open and keeping your awareness up um, so that you're ready if you if you do see see one. So when people are out using the trails and they see something, um, whether it's graffiti or they see a biker where a biker shouldn't be, what what, what should people do to um, help report and, and manage? There's even volunteers that go out and do, do trail watch. Can you talk about all that? Yeah, there are um, volunteers that we have out there. They work through the, the uh, Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. Um, it's called the Volunteer Trail Watch Program, and uh, we rely on them heavily uh, because we, we have a lot of ground to cover out here many miles of trails, many acres of preserved land. Um, so they, they give us a great, uh, you know, eyes and ears out there. Um, and, and for people too, just members of the community, or if you're out there on the trail and you see something that maybe looks a little off, something that's a concern, um, if it doesn't seem like an immediate concern, you can always give us a call on our, our main phone line here, which is 310-544-5353. Uh, and also email us at trails at rpvca.gov. But if it's something that you feel maybe requires immediate attention or some direct attention, you can um, get a hold of us on our information, a uh, preserve information hotline and hotline number, um, which you can call. Um, the number is 310-491-5775. Because you're out here daily and you work with the community, you have thousands of contacts throughout the year um, at all the different trails and parks in our city. Um, and I would think overall most people are out here taking care of the habitat and doing the right thing. Is that your experience? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I would say that the majority of people are very aware of, of what this is, um, you know, what the preserve is and how to appreciate it and um, are, are following the rules. And, you know, we, we just like to remind people, even if they may, maybe aren't following the rules, maybe they're unaware. So that's part of what we do is just kind of uh, contact and educate. Um, we hope everybody gets to get out there and experience nature and appreciate it, but um, maybe you can also um, take it a step further and, and find ways to, to contribute positively to, to our nature, to our planet, which we all depend on so greatly. And in this city, we get to appreciate it um, almost everywhere we go. We have so much preserved land. Um, so finding those little things maybe in your daily life or just picking one day to, uh, to try and, and volunteer or do something like that, we're always open to having, you know, beach cleanup, stuff like that. Um, you can reach out to us and 
having scouting events, um, scout projects. Um, we're always happy to work with, uh, with the public in setting those up. Now you mentioned, I know you work with the scout groups to go out and, and clean up, especially when there's like things like Earth Day activities going on. Um, and finally, just as we wrap it up, anything you want to add that you want to make sure residents understand there are four rangers patrolling a lot of ground here. Mm -hmm. And just for them to better understand um, what you do and how they can make actually your job easier. Sure. Yeah, I think um, what, what I would like to communicate is that, you know, we're out there to have positive experience with, with people. We hope people are out there enjoying the trails um, and we, we just hope they're doing it safely and, and following the rules correctly. And that's uh, it's a positive experience for everyone. And that's what we, we really want out there. But you can um, find out a lot of information on, on our website, um, rpvca.gov slash trail alerts. Um, it'll stay up to date and, and current with all the, uh, the trail closures that may be out there, whether they're more long-term, uh, short-term closures. Uh, but the most important thing is that if you do come across a sign or something indicating that that trail is closed is, is to follow that instruction. Um, you never know what could be down that trail. You don't know why it's closed, but it's important to just follow that rule for safety purposes and, and just, you know, the general, the general practice. What are the ramifications if somebody has a dog not on the leash or <laughs> goes on a trail they're not supposed to, um, what happens? Well, we always like to, um, you know, take the path of, of education and trying to be understanding of people. But if, if the time does come, um, we do have the authorization to, to issue citations where needed. Big thanks to RPV's Recreation and Parks Open Space Management team for all they do. And I do want to mention that just after I interviewed the ranger, a gopher snake did slither by right on cue. It wasn't harmful or camera shy, but it prompted me to get on my way and check in with the Land Conservancy team and local artists who are really digging the landscape at Abalone Cove Park. Hi, I'm Adrienne Mohan. I'm the executive director of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. And here we are at Abalone Cove Reserve. It is a place where we are actively restoring native habitat for the unique species here on the peninsula. Uh, we are working to welcome back the Palos Verdes blue butterfly and other really critical species here um, and to restore these open lands with beautiful wildflowers like lupin and poppies and things that we're all enjoying this springtime with our own little local super bloom here on the peninsula. So here at the Abalone Cove Reserve, um, the Land Conservancy has been working on a four-phase project. It's about 20 acres in total that we're working to restore these coastal bluffs. So over the past four years, we've been planting native of shrubs and wildflowers in a phased approach and behind me you see our crews our stewardship technicians working hard to um, implement and install some of the, the latest plantings here. So the peninsula is really unique and special it's almost an island if you will amongst our urban surroundings uh, to one side you have the ocean behind us and then of course the great LA basin so it's a refuge for wildlife here on the peninsula um, there are coastal areas and rolling hills. They provide all unique uh, opportunities for our wildlife to exist in and around um, the urban environment. So, um, The peninsula is so unique in that you can only find some of the species here, such as the Palos Verdes blue butterfly. Um, it's one of the most endangered butterflies in the world because it only exists here on the Palos Verdes Peninsula in a small area. And so we're doing everything that we can to make sure that we recover that species here so that future generations can enjoy it. Um, you could find other local species here on the peninsula that include the California gnat catcher, the cactus wren, and gray fox, and an array of other species. Mm -hmm. The Land Conservancy has been around since 1988 and were formed by a group of community citizens who were concerned about protecting this open land for the future. And so over that time we've worked with peninsula cities including Rancho Palos Verdes to acquire and now protect and restore these open spaces. Uh, we work with four peninsula cities that also include Rolling Hills Estates and Rolling Hills, as well as the City of LA for the White Point Nature Preserve. Um, we manage two nature centers, so it's a great hub for the community to come and learn about the local environment. And we host a lot of students as well, um, many throughout the uh, PV Unified School District and Title I schools in the LA Unified School District as well. It's kind of a nice opportunity for these kids to see the coast, especially in some LA neighborhoods where it's their first time out to the peninsula.
You'll see us active throughout the peninsula on any given day. You know, for example, we could be working to restore the areas. Uh, we have so many volunteer programs. So Saturday is a busy day for us with our outdoor volunteer days, but we host volunteers throughout the week in different areas. So if you're hiking along a trail and you see a Land Conservancy volunteer pulling some weeds or planting some plants, um, they're around and everywhere. Um, we also have an active education program. So especially in the springtime, we're busy bringing students out through field trips. Um, and so you can learn more about our activities. We invite you to become involved by going to our website and becoming a volunteer. Uh, we need docents and we need um, all kinds of support in order to help uh, conduct our mission. I've been executive director for about four years. Um, it's a wonderful organization. Every day is different and exciting. Um, we do face a lot of challenges in that we know there is a lot of work to be done still. Um, many lands to be restored. We're developing uh, accelerated restoration plans in order to be able to pick up the pace, so to speak, of how much land we can restore. Because we know the species need it, um, especially the blue butterfly, which is um, really imperiled. So that is the challenge, knowing that we have so much to do. Um, um, and my job is to ensure that we can bring the resources and really expand that work to fulfill that mission. It's been a really exciting past uh, year or so. The, the launch of the Go Wild for the Peninsula campaign that included the acquisition of the 96-acre wildlife corridor, uh, which the Land Conservancy and the partnership with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, we were able to secure that and protect it in perpetuity. Um, that was really a hallmark time for us last summer. Um, so the Land Conservancy is so proud to partner with the city in managing the preserves. The Land Conservancy is the habitat manager for the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve, whereas the city owns most of the land in the, in the preserve. And through that partnership, we're able to um, manage this, this for this habitat, as well as recreational opportunities and all of the trails. Something like 32 miles of trails go throughout the peninsula. So it's a wonderful um, opportunity for the public to view the preserve, especially this spring. They can't go on a bad hike in the preserve. Um, one of my favorites really is to go to the Rancho Palos Verdes City Hall and visit Alta Vicente Reserve. It's um, it's restored with now about 20 acres of habitat. We see Cactus Wren, which is not easy to find, uh, but it's an easy hike and with your dog on leash and on trail, it's so enjoyable. Now is a great chance to see wildflowers throughout the open space, uh, but you can also bring wildflowers to your own home, in your own garden. It's a great time to introduce poppies and lupin, um, and we have those for sale. Uh, we're also putting together butterfly baskets, so it's an easy way to have a curated basket from the Land Conservancy to jumpstart your native plant garden at home, even if you have a small space. Well, I just wanted to point out one of my favorite plants. This is a purple sage, and I love it because of its uh, beautiful fragrance, um, and it's kind of these beautiful velvet leaves and and pom-pom kind of shaped purple flowers when they fully establish. It's a drought tolerant, easy to grow, and it makes a nice addition to any garden. And of course, since we're talking about one of your favorites, one of your not so favorites we were talking about earlier is all the mustard we see. <laughs> um, share about the details about mustard because I think people don't realize, right? It's a weed. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful weed. <laughs> we love it each year when it's spring, uh, when, when the hills are yellow, um, but it soon dries out and turns into a wildflower, wildfire concern when it becomes dry. Um, so we're working on doing beautiful replacements um, and other yellow plants like bush sunflower that recreate that beauty without that uh, fire hazard. A beautiful day and I've caught up with Linda, a beautiful artist. Talk about being here today at Abalone Cove and just uh, having this as an amazing place to come and paint. It's such a gift. It's a gift to be out here in this beautiful spot that's been preserved for everybody. The trails are comfortable, the view is to die for, and all the foliage is just ready to take your mind away. Share a little bit about what you were painting today. Well the hills are wild with the mustard so it's just um, total magnet and that was why we all turned up here. But uh, this is a hill that stretches back to Rolling Hills, um, the city of Rolling Hill. And um, with the curves and the atmospheric effects, it's just, you just start and you start with what's real and then you go with what's in your head as well. So it's pretty special. Share about your art group itself. You know, there's, there's a lot of artists out here today yes. that are part of the group. The Pacific Art Group is an old group that belong, is part of the Palos Verdes Art Center uh, Consortium. And it's, I don't know all the founding of it, but there's about 30 of us in the group and we meet regularly 
and there's a calendar like four times a year and there's different activities we visit museums we have demonstrations we go together to paint that kind of thing well the group uh, is uh, about 30 artists uh, associated with the uh, Palos Verdes Art Center so there's about a half a dozen groups like that uh, our group uh, is primarily oil painting and pastel and we try to get out uh, about once a month to do paint outdoors uh, and plein air is the term they use it means fresh air in French it just means we do a painting like this in uh, two three hours it's just fun to get outdoors uh, it's a hobby for most of us most of us are of a certain age <laughs> uh, so it's an opportunity to get out outside it's an opportunity to paint and we're preserving and documenting the the world as it is now uh, capturing all the the beauty that's just inherent in nature and that's going to do it for this edition of around the peninsula thanks for joining us and we hope our show has inspired you to get out and enjoy nature in rancho palos verdes see you next time around the peninsula <laughs>